So I've never done a video like this before and I'm gonna tell you why. So like I see these videos all over the place like on YouTube and on Instagram. It's this whole thing, you know, answering your assumptions about me. And I've never really like done one. And um, it, this is why. And let me just give you the dictionary definition of assumption. It's a thing that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without proof. And I feel like when we make assumptions about people, it I feel like it plays a large part in the detriment of friendships and relationships because it says here like, something that is accepted as true or as certain to happen without proof. And I'm not talking about like the obvious uh, definition of assumption. Like let's say for instance, you run a stop sign in front of a police officer. It's safe to assume that you're going to get pulled over and most likely ticketed. I'm talking more about how this like plays into our like daily life. I think the most dangerous thing associated with assuming things about people is that without even intending to, it plays a part in what we think of them and our perception of that person. And it may be completely false. I think it can even influence how we treat that person. The other thing is that assumptions are just breeding ground for rumors to get started. Rumors destroy friendships and relationships and people. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. I just wanted to say like we all assume things about people. It is the reality of human nature. Today's video is just for fun. I had posted it to my Instagram for people to tell me what their assumptions are of me. And I am going to be addressing those and saying if I feel like you know that's a fair assumption or if I feel like it's something that is untrue about me. I'm also going to be baking a pie um, because I get tired of just sitting down in front of my camera and talking. So we're gonna be baking a pie today. I'm making peanut butter pie and I do have the recipe for the peanut butter pie and the crust in another video, but I will just add them in the description box of this video as well so you don't have to like, yeah, go back however many videos and find the recipes. So they'll be in the description box of this video. And let's get started. First one says, your Dr. Pepper addiction goes deeper than you know. <laughs> yes. Also don't come for me in the comments and tell me that I shouldn't be drinking Dr. Pepper while I'm pregnant because I could be doing cocaine while I'm pregnant, but I'm not. Just kidding, I'm not gonna do cocaine. But I'm just saying, like, Dr. Pepper, cocaine. Like, lesser of the two evils? I don't know. This one says, I assume that you're a really sweet person. <laughs> um, sure, yeah. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> hey, this is a little more serious. You don't really believe exactly how you were raised, Mennonite. Um, that is false. I actually do. I am just gonna say really quick, I'm not gonna get deep on like any of these questions because we don't have time for that. I actually am very thankful for the way that I was raised. When I was a teenager and I would ask my parents, you know, as a Christian, why do we do this? Why do we do that? The answer was never just because. My dad would always take me to a place in scripture and show me like, hey Kim, this is why we believe what we believe. So, you know, this is what Jesus says about this and this is what the Bible says about that. It taught me to never accept the answer. It's just because because that's not an answer. But to be honest, when I was a teenager, I struggled with some things in our faith and our practice. I did struggle a little bit with like my identity as a Christian, as a Mennonite. Where do I fit in with all of this? I'm really thankful that I got answers to those questions and that I wasn't just told, sit back, don't worry about it. It's just because, it's just how we do. It's just what we do. No, there was answers and there was reasons and that really solidified my faith as a teenager. Just as I say, I'm not gonna get deep on any of these and then like I go on that entire rant, excuse me. I assume you're always happy, that is false. We all have our days. It's unfair to assume that anyone is always happy. I assume that you're an introvert when not on camera. A lot of people assumed this about me, that like I'm actually very introverted. As with like anyone, I feel like our personalities um, and the way we like conduct ourselves, it always changes based on the group of people that we're with, our social setting. So when I'm around a close group of like my friends that I'm very comfortable with, I will not shut up. But if I'm in like a crowd of people that I don't know very well, I kind of go into a little turtle shell. There's actually a word for all of this and it's called an ambivert. It's like you're very outgoing when you're around people you know, very introverted when you're around people that you're uncomfortable with. I assume you are very organized and like to stay on top of things and you love everything to be clean. Yes, yes, but <laughs> if a cupboard or a closet or something is a little bit unorganized, it doesn't bother me if I can shut the door. If I can see the clutter, if I can see the disorganization, then it bothers me. However, I do like to have a tidy home. And um, before we go to bed every night, I like tidy the house because I don't wanna wake up to a mess. <laughs> I assume you wanted second baby to be a girl. 
So that would actually be false. So I was pretty cool either way. But when we found out it was a boy, I remember feeling relief because I really wanted, both of us really wanted a brother for Callan. We wanted a girl just for like all the selfish reasons, like, oh, the pretty dresses, the pretty girl name that we had picked out. But like, we both genuinely wanted Callan to have a brother. So no, not really disappointed, but I'll be honest, there were a few tears. And here's the thing, every time we found out the gender of our baby, I cried with Callan and Daryl and I both wanted a baby boy so bad. And I still kind of cried a little bit because it wasn't a girl. And I know that someday when we find out we're having a girl, I'm gonna cry because it's not a boy. I'm always going to cry, no matter if it's a boy or a girl. It's not gonna matter, I'm gonna be emotional. Get used to it, deal with it. Um, I assume you had a short dating period. So I don't really know what you guys would consider like a short dating period, but from when we went on our first date to the day we got married was roughly like a year and nine months, so. So is that technically a short dating period? I don't know. Frankly, I don't care. I would assume you understand sarcasm and appreciate it in other people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Can I be like brutally honest and I'm not trying to offend any person out there, but literally people that don't get sarcasm drive me crazy. My husband and I are both so sarcastic and it really just drives me crazy when someone is like not sarcastic and they're literally just like not getting it and then you like feel bad because you're like no I was being sarcastic like I don't actually feel that way and they're like oh like I thought you meant that and I'm like no it's obviously sarcasm oh anyway drives me crazy if you don't get sarcasm that's okay but I definitely I would agree with that assumption I I appreciate sarcasm in people to be completely honest with you though, Daryl and I have to be really careful not to bring sarcasm into our like arguments um, because it's very easy for both of us to passive aggressively just like, you know, throw some sarcasm in there. We both realize that we are very fluent in sarcasm. All it's gonna do is worsen the situation. It's gonna hurt them. And it's just more things that you have to apologize for. So, you know, I assume you want four kids. And also there were like so many of them that were assuming that I want a big family. And let me, can I just ask you guys something like totally in complete vulnerable honesty? Do you guys think that? Because like we had a second child so close to the first. Because I mean, okay, you're not wrong. I would love a big family. And you know, if the Lord wills, I'll, I'll take it. But um, I probably like four kids, five kids. Sure, yeah. Um, that sounds amazing. It just, it cracks me up that like everybody was in my assumptions box. Like I assume you want a huge family. I honestly think it's because we decided to have, you know, our boys 14 months apart. And I'm just going to be honest with you guys. We literally just wanted Callan to have a little best friend. Like we wanted them to have someone to grow up with. And so like, you know, it, you can assume what you want, but like, <laughs> I just really feel like that is playing a part in why like everyone was assuming and I'm just like okay I assume you love being a homemaker wife mama yes I love it um I assume you have an immense amount of patience I would say I'm not patient like at all I don't know I guess I would just have to ask people that know me I assume you have a great sense of humor <laughs> yes totally have the best sense of humor ever it's just people just can't stop laughing when they're around me and it's because I'm just hilarious no, I'm literally the most annoying person ever. My sense of humor is that of a five-year-old and people get completely annoyed at me. So no, no, I would say my sense of humor is trash. <laughs> I assume you don't really meal plan, but rather decide your supper the day of. You seem more of a fly by the seat of your pants type of girl to me. So, okay, first of all, ouch. <laughs> Secondly, you're not wrong. So I love meal pa planning, I love meal planning. Um, but it just doesn't tend to work with our schedule. Um, I find myself having entirely too many leftovers in my fridge. And so I will plan roughly like three or four meals for a week. I won't pick a specific night and then um, whatever, you know, night works best with our schedule. If we need it to be running out the door after supper, you know, I'll pick something that's super fast and simple. Um, if I know we're gonna have the evening at home and I have plenty of time to work on it, I'll pick something that takes a little more time. Some weeks when I see that like we're gonna be home for the majority of the week, 
I will do like an actual meal plan with like the days, not super often, especially in the summer. I assume you're the adventurous one in your marriage. So false. Actually, Daryl would be the more adventurous one. Like if it weren't for him, I never would have tried like snowboarding. I never would have learned how to wakeboard. He's the one that pushed me to start my YouTube channel. I was terrified to do that. Um, he has pushed me outside of my comfort bubble ever since I have known him. It's the best, but no, I am not the adventurous one in the relationship. <laughs> I assume your friends love you, but sometimes find you annoying. <laughs> what? <laughs> no. Yeah. Yep. Um, I assume you sew. I do know how to sew. That doesn't mean that I sew. <laughs> it means that I hate to sew. <laughs> I assume you have not traveled outside of the country. That is false. I traveled to Haiti when I was younger with my family and Daryl and I went to the Bahamas for our honeymoon. So I've been out of the country twice. <laughs> I assume you grew up a tomboy. So I grew up on a farm. I guess it depends on like what you would consider a tomboy, but yeah, I would say more or less. You're always like out in the woods, driving four wheelers, getting muddy. Um, as a teenager, I like to shoot gun. I still do. I just don't ever get around to it. I had horses. Yeah, I would say I was more of a tomboy than anything. I assume you'd rather drink coffee than tea. Um, actually it used to be that way, but anymore I would say I am more of a tea drinker. During the cold months, there is nothing quite as amazing as like hot tea. And then in the summer it's like iced tea. And anytime I go to like a restaurant, I order iced tea. Um, I assume you enjoy thrift shopping over going to Target. Yes, that is true. I love thrift shopping. I think it's like the adventure of like not knowing what you're gonna find. I assume you are outspoken, especially about things that are important to you. <laughs> yeah, I would say that's true. And when I think about it, like my mind goes to um, like the whole abortion argument and I feel very, very strongly about my views on abortion. And those would be very, very pro-life, and I will not apologize for that. So yeah, I would say I can be fairly outspoken about things that matter to me. And I think it's okay if you do it in the right way. Here's an interesting one. I assume you guys are debt-free. So, um, we are debt-free other than like our mortgage, so like what we owe on our house. Um, that is the only like loan we have. We don't have any student loans, we don't have any vehicle loans, we don't have any credit card debt. As far as like vehicles go, I know in like some situations, you know, you have to put a vehicle on payments, but my husband is not a fan of that mentality. And so um, <laughs> we drive vehicles that we can afford. And I'm not saying like we'll never have a vehicle on payments, um, but for now we really feel like our money is best spent in other places. <laughs> I assume you didn't work before having a family. That is false. I actually worked um, before I was married, I worked at a coffee shop for several years and then I was actually manager at that coffee shop. And then when I got married, I had a cleaning job. I assume you can't go to the grocery store without running into a YouTube follower. I would say that's not true. Um, I do run into subscribers a lot and I love it. It's so fun like getting to meet you guys and stuff. I always feel like I run into a YouTube subscriber when I'm like in the biggest hurry ever and I'm just like in my own little world and then I'm like totally caught off guard by it. And yeah, anyway, good times. I assume Mennonites think other Christians won't get to heaven because they don't have the same practices as Mennonites. So for me personally, no, I do not believe that. Um, salvation is not contingent on being Mennonite. Mennonitism is literally a culture. We just have a specific way of interpreting the Bible. As do all denominations, all Christians, they have their own way of interpreting the Bible. For me personally, I refuse to say that, you know, just because you don't believe in practice what I believe, you're not going to heaven. I guess if you want to have like a theological conversation about like the plan of salvation and how to get to heaven based on what the Bible says, um, I feel like that's like a whole other conversation. But as far as like practice goes, I do not think that just Mennonites are gonna get to heaven. So I'm gonna say something kind of controversial, you know, come for me in the comments, whatever. Um, but we all know like not all Christians are Mennonites, but something else that kind of gets overlooked is that not all Mennonites are Christians. And I think that is something that's between them and God. But anyway, we're not gonna go there. <laughs> Hit me up later if you want to talk about that. <laughs> um, I assume you snore. <laughs> No, I do not snore. I need to ask Daryl, I guess. I don't know, I think, feel like he'd tell me. <laughs> I assume you want to move soon. Uh, false. No, I love my house. I want to stay here forever. <laughs> I assume you're excited to be a boy mom. Uh, yeah, very. I assume you were born Mennonite. So I was born into a Mennonite family. Well, 
let me rephrase, I was adopted as an infant into a Mennonite family and I was raised in the Mennonite culture, but back to the whole thing, like I was also raised in a Christian home, so I was not born a Christian, I had to make that decision, but I'm, anyway confusing. Okay, so there were actually like several that were like this. So I'm just going to read the one and but it's all kind of the same concept. But I assume you are a faithful friend and that you prefer a small group of close friends over a large group of friends that you are not as close with. Yes. So what I found for myself is how important it is to invest in the relationships that matter to you. So friendship goes two ways. The relationships that are positive and uplifting and don't make you walk away from it feeling mentally tired. I've had to learn the very hard reality that sometimes it's okay to walk away. It's okay to step aside and say, you know what, this relationship is not benefiting um, either of us. I think what's changed is that, you know, now that I'm a mom, I've realized how much my mental health influences my family. My son will feel the vibe when I'm not myself. My husband will obviously notice that something's off, um, will notice that I'm mentally tired, mentally worn out. And I've realized that my family matters a lot to me. And <laughs> If I have to walk away from certain relationships and certain friendships in order to be the type of wife and mom that I feel called to be, um, then that's okay. And you have to do it in the right way. It's not about, you know, just picking a few friends and then weeding out the rest. Okay, I think this video is getting long, so I'm gonna shut up after this. So the next one says, I assume you are scared to go into labor. I think every mom gets to the third trimester and starts to feel a little bit nervous knowing, you know, what's coming. And, you know, I even think about that verse in John 16, you know, it says about like, a woman hath sorrow because her time has come. Something, how does that verse go? Okay, it's John 16, 21. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow because her hour is come. And it's talking about, you knowing that like labor is starting and your hour has come. Uh, it's time to give birth. <laughs> um, but as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into this world. I think about that verse um, a lot when I'm in the third trimester. I think the reason why that assumption was made, just, you know, based on like my previous birth, um, is, you know, where am I at, you know, mentally? And to be honest with you guys, I think I've made this comment before, but I feel a lot of peace for several reasons. You know, first of all, my body is capable. My body was created to do this. I know I can do it because I did. I've already done it once and I know my body can do it. God created this incredible miracle of birth and of life. And it's easy to look at it like, you know, oh, God cursed women with, you know, labor because, you know, it's painful. But honestly, um, God chose women specifically for the role of motherhood, of, you know, delivering and bringing children into this world. And that is such a special thing to know that, you know, us as women have been chosen by God for that. Okay, I got cut off like mid-sentence because my camera battery died. So while it was charging, I put the rest of my pie together. I was actually gonna like film this entire process of like making the filling and like putting it together. Um, but I wasted entirely too much time answering the, all the assumptions uh, while I was making the pie crust that I was just like running out of time. Um, and so I decided to just make the pie. But there is a video on my channel um, all about like how to like make the pie filling and everything. So the recipe will be in the description box. Um, the last question I was answering was, you know, am I scared to go into labor? I feel like I answered that, but yeah, just to summarize, um, no, I, I really don't feel scared to go into labor. Um, obviously, some nerves, um, but yeah. Overall, I would say I have a lot of peace about the whole thing, and um, I'm very anxious to see how it's going to go. Let's just say that. I'm, I'm very interested. I'm interested, not anxious, interested to see. <laughs> how it's gonna go and yeah, what uh, my second birth story is gonna look like. So I'm excited about that. And I apologize for all the background noise. I have my dryer and the dishwasher going at the moment. So that's annoying. Anyways, but look at my pie. Um, it just needs to set up a little bit longer in the refrigerator and then I'll put like the whipped cream and the topping on it. It's gonna be super yummy. Did I even say what kind of pie this is? It's peanut butter pie. I don't even know if I mentioned that. But anyways, um, I am gonna end this video here. I feel like it's gonna be like long because I kind of got long-winded and I apologize. But anyways, um, if you made it this far, you might as well like the video. <laughs> uh, anyways, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Have a good week. Bye.